Many towns have a name that can be traced to a landmark in history, and yet how few have found a lasting place in English literature. That is the proud claim of Knutsford, the Cheshire town that came to life in the pages of Cranford, the book that won classic fame for its author, Mrs. Gaskell. It was a century ago, and this story, after paying tribute to the Victorian authoress, is centered around the people and their achievements in the modern Knutsford or should we say Cranford. Nutsford, Cranford, Nutsford, Cranford, how easily the bridge is made. And if there was any doubt, the town is steeped in classic atmosphere. For many years, Nutsford was the home of Mrs. Gaskell. It was to this house, Heathwaite, now number 17 Gaskell Avenue, that the stagecoach brought a motherless baby, Elizabeth Stevenson to be cared for by her aunt, Mrs. Lum. Here, happy childhood days were spent. One can imagine the young girl looking through this very window, weaving stories around the ladies in the sedan chairs that passed by. Childhood characters that were to become the Miss Matty and Miss Deborah of Cranford. Close by, at Heath House, a highwayman lived. And in the squire's tale, Edward Higgins the highwayman lived again. It was in Nutsford, at the parish church, that Elizabeth Stevenson became the wife of the Reverend William Gaskell. Although Mrs. Gaskell and her husband worshipped at Brook Street Unitarian Chapel, nonconformists were not allowed, at this time, to conduct marriages in their own chapels. After the wedding, the couple settled down in Manchester, where the Reverend Gaskell was to become the minister of Cross Street Chapel. The old building was blitzed during the war. As the wife of the minister, Mrs. Gaskell brought help and compassion to the dwellers in the terrible slum conditions. And through her books, she helped to awaken the social conscience of the nation, though it brought her much heartache. Yet, through the years, Mrs. Gaskell's heart remained in Nutsford. And there, by the Unitarian Chapel, in a quiet corner of the churchyard, lies the authoress who led the fight against the slums. A fight later to be taken up by Dickens and the social reformers of the 19th century. And Nutsford built a memorial tower to keep her memory and her works ever green. Cranford was published in 1853, but what of Nutsford? Legend has it that King Canute gave the town its name. Marching through the town, the king is said to have forded the Lily River and so got his feet wet once again. You may well wonder if this was the actual river. Local historians believe that the king forded this area. Through the centuries, the people of Nutsford lived on upper or lower land and their income matched their place on the town map. But rich and poor alike were divided by conflicting ideals, for this was the age of intolerance. While the devout worshipped in the chapel below, an armed sentinel stood guard on that very tower. Their religion was not that of the established church, and forewarned was forearmed. Yet the town seems to have well treated its prisoners. The Sessions House, when completed in 1818, was the most imposing building in the town. The original jail was built on the side. With the stone left over, they built the Savings Bank, one of the first in the country. The spirit of rural England has long reigned over Nutsford. In 1864, the town first celebrated the coming of spring with a May Day festival. It has since become a tradition, winning world renown and attracting visitors from many lands. Today the festival lives on with the characters so beloved of Mrs. Gaskell joining a cavalcade of Nutsford history.
procession moves on towards its final destination, Nuxford Heath. Once again, our story is woven into the tapestry of Cranford, the same broad heath that faced Mrs. Gaskell as a child and won a place in her most famous book. The procession passes near an ancient inn, formerly known as the Duke of Wellington. Here lived the first royal May Queen. So, on the same broad heath, the crowning of the royal May Queen takes place. The prefix royal was bestowed by King Edward and Queen Alexandra. They attended the ceremony as Prince and Princess of Wales in 1887. I crown thee queen of our Royal May Day festivity. I hail thee, Queen of May. Spanning nearly a century of May Day celebration, another Royal May Queen is added to the long list that reads like a family history of Knutsford. As each spring came and passed into high summer, the fame of the May Day festival grew, and with it, the small country town became known to a wider gathering. They thought of Knutsford as a blend of cottage, of ancient inn, and of stately country mansion that had mellowed with the centuries. Its main thoroughfare, a necklace of broad Elizabethan timbers and weather-worn stone quarried from the native soil, yet for those who seek amid the classic rural lines, there are architectural gems in a continental setting. Gems that surely owe their inspiration to far-off Italy. A Florentine tower, Verona, with its traditional balcony scene, or a villa nestling in the Alban Hills, Nutsford is proud of its Italian collection, the work of the late Richard Harding Watt, whose travels on the continent inspired the creation of these lines in Nutsford. Since the urban district of Nutsford was constituted in 1895, the town has been fortunate in its loyal and public-minded councils. Their earnest endeavors are inspired by the civic service of thanksgiving, when the members of the council lead a procession to church while townsfolk gather to acknowledge a year of social achievement. The town has long championed the cause of youth, the future citizens of Knutsford. The primary school provides that all-important groundwork. For gone are the days when rustic work and spinning and agriculture were the staple industries of the town. With the coming of new industries, the modern schools have a new charge. Here, pupils are trained to take their place in the scientific development of British industry. Situated on a direct route to Liverpool, Nutsford is the gateway to the northwest coast.
So the council has built a coach station complete with car park directly behind the Sessions House. It has become a modern staging point, just like the coaching inns of old, except that bottled beer and sandwiches now replace the porter and roast beef of yesteryear. To complete the picture of a busy centre, we see shoppers, holiday makers and day trippers arriving and leaving the town. Making up the yearly total of people who come, who see and who are conquered by the charm of the country town that stars in a bestseller. During the post-war years, Knutsford has had a growing population. To meet the need, housing estates have been built with well-planned, almost loving care around the town. Here, with every modern convenience, Knutsford folk can bring up their families and find a haven of rest, a happy home in the evening of their lives. For Knutsford is their home, the place where they feel they belong. When work is done, there is dancing in the Civic Hall. There is an extensive library. For the young and active, there are all-weather tennis courts and three recreation grounds where cricket gives way to football as winter follows summer. And for those who love to reap the rich harvest from the good earth, for nuts that folk spring from yeoman farming stock, the council has provided allotments. And that heritage from the past, Nutsford Heath is now the happy hunting ground of the young, while the older folk look on and remember their own childhood in a happy glow of contentment. That vision of the open spaces reminds us of Nutsford's own tract of National Trust land within the town boundary, Tatton Hall, which was once the family seat of Lord Edgerton. A historic landmark, a place in the classics, and a national heritage. This is the triple pride of Nutsford. Back through the town to the council offices, today Nutsford blends the old with the new, a happy union that underlines the motto beneath the armorial bearings, a town that looks to the past, the present, and to the future.